Hello to you. Yeah, it's always been a while when it comes to me of late. Ah, uh, it is just the way it is at the moment for me. Just so much to do on it on the daily, basically. Picking up the camera. <laughs> if I remember, it's there, and that's the truth. But I'd like Clementine to meet all of you. And Clementine is my Valentini puffer. Of course, I everybody has a clown in their their marine tank. And of course, if you don't know what this little guy is here, he's a pajama cardinal. I do, of course, have a starfish up here. They all have names. Have a little snail who burrows every day but he comes out at night with his two little eyes poking out and he sits through the sand so I've been busy setting up this uh, marine tank with of course the fish which has taken quite a while of course because the tank has to do its thing and build up good bacteria and do the bio stuff you know and it takes a uh, a tank a little while to do that so the brown that you're seeing uh, on the glass is pretty normal and what's appearing on the rocks is pretty normal when your tank is cycling so but the fish are doing well because the water parameters are great otherwise I wouldn't have fish in there at this present time so this is kind of a check-in to say hello to you all of course um, Miss Lily is up there having a snooze. She will be down later, of course, because she has become very accustomed here now to wanting to come out in the evenings. Not so much during the day, but certainly the evenings and spend time out, which is great. It's taken her a little while, but she's finally got there. But, mm hmm would you like to meet one of the newbies, if he's available? It's very hard to see in here, because he blends in quite well. <gasps> but, my little boy, well, we can't see him. And if I open the door, I'm likely to wake him up. And I, I really don't want to, because he, he's a bit of a, I like your fingers, mum. Jimmy can handle him without there being an issue, but when it comes to me, Obi, my fingers look pretty good to him. And I don't know why, just me. I can literally put my finger on his nose and push him backwards, and he doesn't budge from my finger. He doesn't bite it, but he doesn't budge from it. He's just starting to, to know I'm in the tank, of course in his in or his little little enclosure so Obi is our olive python and he's a few months old now well probably four months old and he's doing amazingly well um here he's eating doing oh he drop feeds he doesn't strike his food I just put it down the bottom and and he pretty much helps himself now being an olive python, very retic in his manners. Um, you know, literally open the door and he springs out because he thinks that there might be food available. Um, he's quite happy to come on out. He's quite happy to spend time with us. Um, I'm just trying to get a little bit of a side shot for you in there of him. He is gorgeous, but olive pythons are. And of course, not a carpet python, not a Moralia. So, um, yeah, something really quite different. I'll leave that off the front of him. I've had that on the front because he's glass surfing all of the time, wanting to come out, and I don't want that stress, you know, being on him all the time and thinking if I do this, I get to come out all the time. He can't be out all of the time. Of course, my birds are all over in this room 
But there's Jazz. Uh, doing better. Is growing. Has just started his shed while well, he's got the shed off his head and his back and um, probably still maybe has it all off by now but you know over his coccidia fingers crossed of course waiting on the test results to come back from the vet some um, today or tomorrow but he certainly has grown but it's taken him a while and I see others so much bigger than him who are of the same batch but anyway he's on the road to recovery and doing well so I do want to show you Tessa's enclosure today actually because I'm I love it and so does she so I want to share it with you so I'll turn this way a bit so that light isn't straight in my face well in your faces I guess but it always seems whenever I put the camera on uh, there's either birds squawking or there's dogs barking always and it kind of like puts me off a bit and I think to myself oh, every time I pick up the camera there's noise from one or the other of the animals the quietest of course as you know are the snakes which is really great why I love this room with out the dogs in the room with me but we'll go over here and hopefully you can see um, let's see a mayor is taking his time deciding on whether he actually wishes to come on out but what has also been keeping me busy it's not just necessarily the snakes, um, Maya is, uh, is cruising quite comfortably up there doing, doing a thing so I can very quickly flash on out here. Excuse the cloudy water of my tank at the moment, it's still cycling like as much as my marine one is so this one's been going a fraction bit longer but I've gone back to having um, an African Siglid tank. Um, at the moment I've been sorting them all out, who's who and what's what, and who's being nice to each other and who isn't being so nice to each other. Yes, Jackson, I know. So um, there's my big uh, frontosa. Ooh, see, dog's barking come out to take a look at what is actually going on very docile friendly fellows the frontosa so I have about I have five in there but he is the biggest the rest are just just little ones at this point oh, thank you. shush Jackson there is nobody on the other end he does this with the phone I must say so I have Demace and I Lombardi electric yellows, cobalt blues, dolphins, OB, peacocks, some hongi, uh, I can't really think of anything else at this particular point but there is a variety in there and I could put a lot more in here. I put them into a six foot by two foot by two foot tank so I have two big canisters going underneath so plenty of filtration which of course Africans need because uh, they poop a lot these guys and make a lot of waste um, but I also because I had to sort out the good guys from the bad guys because there's always that in an African Ziglid tank I have ended up having to make an all-male uh, tank they're only little at this particular point they will grow to be quite big uh, not in a massive tank but a big enough tank for seven of them and uh, yeah it's an all male uh, African Siglid tank so there's some peacocks, a Lombardi who was a right nasty thing um, there's a couple of those a um, couple of honey I think uh, but we'll see how it goes so far there they're all behaving themselves 
but yes the water is a bit cloudy and that should clear up I, I need to actually wipe the glass you could say of course Wolfie American Siglet Dovi uh, check him out is he one big massive boy so you could say have massive fish but along with that you know massive snakes not that I would put my in that category of course my little spotted python uh, she isn't quite massive but mm, massive bradley down there and of course oh here is sorry mate I, I didn't get you in this one did I but there you go there's your face shot for the video today okay enjoying your water mate sure you are I have to put his water dish in there for him and um Amaya who has yet to come out I thought while well, Miss Tessa is um, laying in a perched position up on her branches which I might add I have never seen Tessa actually do this of course you know I see Oscar has done this especially as a little one um, Oscar is probably Oscar is my coastal he is in in here I have to turn around a bit um, enjoying his water bowl which is mm, one of Oscar's favorite things to do is lay in his water bowl really my only one that has been that way inclined but back to Tessa now you will all know I'll, I'll put a clip up of her previous enclosure which was well her previous enclosure was very similar to this a mayor is actually in hers but I not that I'm too lazy to move over there or anything because it's just there um, let's go over and I will show you as I trip over it's morning early Tessa just shed so that's her shed hanging there but this is um, if I can get in there because there's a cat climber here um, but this was Tessa's enclosure which is four foot by four foot and two foot deep um, basically which was fine and dandy and wonderful and great um, a bear is actually in there on the shelf which Tessa absolutely loved laying in there but we have since done a new enclosure for Tessa which I really wanted you all to see so this is actually seven foot by two and a half foot or a little bit more and the same in depth so you know, Tessa is a big girl and desperately needed that more space and it it, it was essential as far as I was concerned it's really quite essential for many of my snakes right now especially Archie but currently we're doing an enclosure for Jazz my bearded dragon who is a priority as well so basically this is made out of uh, like core flute material I guess you could say on the sides around the back and an amazing source to use doing enclosure not your cheapest I might add 
but basically this creates such a thermal barrier um, as well you know we use it on our patio roofs to block the sun or um, lessen the heat that actually comes through it well I guess it's the same the heat just doesn't go out of it but what I did with Tessa's was virtually created not quite half um, the top which is open with screen and people go oh screen lids most of her enclosure is covered in of course Oscar's on top of it and eventually there will be a lid on this sort of thing where it'll cover the whole lot anyway but this at this point is open because I like the deep heat I also like the basking which she now has and she has some UV up here as well this will ultimately go on the inside of the enclosure but you know beardies bearded dragons certainly need that ultra UV uh, 10.0 I only give my snakes 5.0 I think that is all that they need she has the availability to get under her basking and the UV over here she has the availability to get away from it completely over this end and make sure that if you give your snake UV they can get away with it get away from it um, you know bearded dragons are the same they need to be able to get away from their UV equally so she still has a hammock and I have seen her in this hammock and laying over there on the shelves these bamboo shelves I bought from Kmart which you just make up and I have just sat them in there for her to utilize to lay on to climb on to do whatever she wants also over here at the cool end but she has a great big water bowl I'm trying to um, not have I will open up her enclosure for you to see um, without the glare in there I just don't want to disturb her too much and I probably won't she doesn't care but she has a great big water bowl down here now which is available to her to get in and I know that she probably could if she really wanted to um, but she has these branches as well which is probably about what would be considered to be the only natural thing apart from some rocks um, around her water bowl um, the plants of course are all artificial with a big snake like this you, real plants would last five minutes she'd only have to crawl over it and it'd be crushed and wrecked so you know some artificial plants and it just offers greenery I guess you could say now I've used egg crate as her vents I don't know if you can see them they're hard to see actually when I look through the mirror oh the mirror camera poor, poor. can you tell it's early um, air crates um, make great vents in the enclosures but ultimately what I'm in what I'm actually really loving is her ability to do this like wow man I, I've never seen her even slightly attempt to perch as she is actually doing now and she's a big girl Tessa she is longer than this enclosure she probably is has another third of herself um, that she could stretch out if if she could 
but man, you know, I can't build a, what, 12, 11 foot enclosure. It, it, yeah, it's about practicality, but also giving her the best that I can. So, seeing my girl perched just truly warms my heart to see this behavior that big, little or otherwise, it is amazing to, to see that this is what they will do if you create something that gives them the availability to actually do this. Um, I am, yeah, loving it. I'm, I'm loving the enclosure and I'm pretty sure that, you know, looking at Tessa, she is actually totally loving it, loving it herself. So, you know, this was done with the, the thought of being able to stack, which is why I said there will be a, a section put on here so that we'll still be able to get to the lights and everything, but we can put another enclosure on the top. Uh, I don't know who will be there because ultimately Oscar is going to end up with quite a big enclosure, probably similar length, maybe not as much height, but still quite high so that they can climb up and enjoy the space in terms of getting up higher. So. Tessa doesn't have any hides. Um, she's never been one to be in any hides and she's an older girl now and not a young snake. I mean, if she were, you know, a couple of years old, three years old even, I might consider still having some sort of a hide area for her. But she can get into places where she feels safe and secure anyway. But a big snake doesn't need that. They mature, they become confident, and that is certainly um, how Tessa is these days, an extremely confident girl who does not become defensive, and if you all remember Tessa from young, so defensive, instead I have one already still, which is spring. Highly defensive, highly on guard still, and she's about three years old. Now, I'm not putting anything on myself and saying, well, I didn't bring her up. Well, and so that's why. Um, I'm not saying that at all, but I didn't bring her up. And so these behaviors came with her. So we just have to get rid of them. You could say, we may never get rid of them. Um, I, I can't work miracles. I can just do what I do and hope for the best, I guess you could say. So anyway, there's my beautiful girl, Just Shed, which is the best time to get them, is it not? They know they're beautiful. They know they look beautiful. Well, I think they do. And uh, best time to take a video, which is maybe why she's sitting so still and yeah, not moving and could care less. Because she knows she's beautiful and it is a good time to, to film her. Anyway, I'm gonna love and leave you. Take care, everyone. Ciao.